Hello again. I am inserting a little extra video here in this section on working with variables in P5.js to talk about something called an incrementation operation. I really just want to put laser focus in on this one line of code here, circle x equals circle x plus one, right? So this was the first step in learning how to define, declare and initialize and use your own variables. The variable called circle x, I set it to an initial value of 100, um, and then every frame I add one to it, um, and so we get this illusion of it moving across the canvas. If I click the mouse, I reset it back to zero. So why am I here to just talk more and more about circle x equals circle x plus one? When you're learning to code, which is presumably what you're doing right now watching these videos, you'll quickly discover that you were taught to do it one way, you tried it that way, and then you found another example that did it a different way. Especially in JavaScript, there's multiple ways to write the same thing. So it can be very confusing. There's also often this mantra that programmers will have of trying to reduce the amount of typing and to write things in more and more and more shorthand. Um, some of this can be called syntactic sugar, a different way. Actually, that's not all, syntactic sugar isn't always shorthand, but it's a way of kind of sometimes of reducing or cleaning up syntax. In any case, I don't know that this is really so sweet. I don't love shorthand always because it can make things a little confusing, especially when you're beginning to learn, but it cannot be avoided. <laughs> so I want to cover some shorthand for you right now for incrementation operations. So I had the variable circle x. Let's just simplify that and make it the variable x. So here, my variable name is x. I've declared it with the keyword let, and I've given it an initial value of 100. Then, presumably in draw, if I'm following what I did in my code, I might say something like x equals x plus 5. I want to increment the value of x by 5 every time through draw. It starts at 100, then becomes 105, 110, 115, <laughs> and so on and so forth. This can also be written as x plus equals 5. It's common enough that this shorthand, x equals x plus 5, is reduced to x plus equals 5. Guess what? If I were to change this to x equals x plus 1, this would be x plus equals 1, and this can be further reduced to x plus plus. So this is a common enough thing that happens in coding over and over again, just increment a variable by one, increment a variable by one, that there is a two character sequence plus plus that you can write, which means the exact same thing as x equals x plus one. Incidentally, if you've ever heard of the programming language C++, you know, why is it called C++? There was a programming language once called, I mean, it still exists, called C, and then there were improvements and changes made to it, and the next version is incrementing by one, or C++. This can also be done with minus, x minus equals one would be decrementing x by one. You could do this with multiplying, x times or asterisk equals two. That would be doubling x every frame. Slash equals would be divide. And there are more and more kinds of operations like this. So that's really all I wanted to say. I probably didn't need to take whatever this is like a three hour video on what x plus equals one is written means, but hopefully this helps clarify for you as I go through future examples where you start to see these kinds of shorthands and syntactic sugars and um, um, pop up here and there. And I hope that it is sweet for you. See you in the next video. Uh, actually, I'm not leaving just yet, just to confirm. <laughs> I'm gonna change this to circle x plus plus equal one, same exact result, plus equals 10, it's moving by 10, and then just to be sure, circle x plus plus, it's moving by one. Okay, hope this was helpful to you, and look forward to seeing you in the next video.